So here's the Heathkit AA29. I've got it all disassembled. And I'm going to go after uh, just recapping this. Seems to have all the capacitors I need, so I might just dig right into it. I don't normally take it apart to this degree and do them all at the same time. Usually I like to do a board or two to make sure that if there's a problem I can track it down pretty easily, but we'll give this a try and see what happens. So as you can see, I've got all the boards recapped at this point. Here's a list of what I did and some of the readings. There were a few that were uh, way out of tolerance and uh, most of them were around 150% or 150% of their nominal. So good time to get these things all replaced. I guess any time's a good time. So we'll move on to the assembly or reassembly. So I'm going to reassemble this in reverse order. So this will, this was the last thing I took apart and we'll put that back together first. And it's the um, control preamp board. And it just slides in here and reconnects to those pins. As you can see along the bottom, there are some indentations there where the circuit board needs to fit in order to prevent it from sliding back when you push or push the buttons or operate the slide controls. So I'm going to try and put this on a tripod now and show you how that goes in. Once it's all in, then we've got some screws to put in on each end to lock it in place. Another thing I wanted to point out to make uh, life a little easier with the reassembly was I slid these connectors vertically just about a quarter to eighth of an inch. That way we can slide the panel in, reconnect it, and then drop it down into the slot. So here's a sub-assembly of the output amplifiers. They're already bolted to the heat sinks and then this cross bracket that goes along the back. I've got the screws in temporarily. And what will happen here is that this will set in place right there. And then we've got a couple of screws here in here and in the back that we'll need to reinstall. So we've got the unit flipped over now and I'll zoom in a little and what we need to do now is to push the, 
the pin connectors into each of the output amplifiers. So I'm just going to go around now and finish tightening the screws. So next we'll install the power supply board and this is pretty straightforward. You can see that there are a couple of little notches in the board here and that's where it will connect up and align with these pins right here. So I'm going to zoom around. That was a bit of a bugger getting the board off because what those pins do obviously is hold that board down so that it maintains connections with these pins and these sockets so all it's got to do now is go back in there and align with those and press into place So the last board to go in is the input preamp, it's all recapped, and I did want to point out here that I had to remove either side uh, a button off of each of these uh, switches here in order to get it out, and boy I'm just extremely careful whenever I need to do that, I'm definitely afraid of breaking one of those. Uh, I did deoxit each of the uh, controls while I had that open as well and deoxit on the switches. Also wanted to point out every time that I did this I cleaned and polished all of the connections so when those things go back in place hopefully we've got a good connection. So you start by installing the RCA jack insulator plate, put that in the back and upside down um, and then the circuit board will align with it. The circuit board goes forward into the slots for the buttons and there's a stud on either side that it will align to and once you've got it in the front you can slowly push it down and have the uh, have the jacks align with the sockets put the pins in there and then you just need to press it down to have it snap into the the little catch on each of the sockets. So once the circuit board's installed, turn the unit upside down, install the remaining attachment screws in the fiber washers, the insulator washers, uh, that'll hold that jack assembly in place. So here is just simply reinstalling the rear plate. It takes four screws to do that. And then you can get to the bottom of the unit and install uh, the bottom plate as well. Okay, so we're not finished yet, but let's. I uh, got some speakers hooked up. Those are some Techniques uh, bookshelf speakers, <clears throat> and I've got my iPad hooked up to it here. And let's fire this up. Let's see what we got.
One other thing before we wrap up here, it's pretty important to have these slides, fader switches, aligned in the slot so that these things move back and forth easily. And one of the things that they've engineered in here that allows you to do that is this slot here. So there's one on either side and you can move that screw forward and aft which will uh, pivot that circuit board a little bit to the front or a little bit to the back and angle it so that you can make those things align closer into the center of those slots. That way they'll move easier. So amplifiers all back together. I think I've still got some more testing I want to do, especially with the phono inputs. But uh, it brightened up the sound quite a bit and uh, give me another 10 years off the new electrolytics. So I'll capture all of this, put together a video and throw that up for you folks in case uh, somebody is going through the same process. Hope this helps. Thanks. Have a good day.